Hi guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com, and welcome back to the five-part series, How to Build Your Own Lithium Battery. In part five today, we're going to be talking about how to choose the right charger for your battery. Now there are two main aspects that you need to look at when you're choosing your charger, and that is the voltage and the current. The first aspect is the voltage, so you want to make sure that you're choosing the appropriate voltage for your battery. And the way you do that is you multiply the number of cells that you have in your battery by 4.2 volts. 4.2 volts is the fully charged voltage of those cells. So for example, in the battery we built, it has 10 cells, so we're going to multiply 4.2 by 10, and that will give us 42 volts. So we need a charger that outputs 42 volts, and that's the same for any 36 volt battery based on lithium ion cells. Now if you're working with um, lithium iron phosphate or other chemistries of batteries, you're going to need a different voltage. So uh, lithium iron phosphate, I believe it's 3.7 volts, so you multiply 3.7 by um, however many cells you have, but uh, we're working with lithium ion here, so we're going to be using 42 volts. Now if you were using, let's say, 7 cells for a 24 volt battery, you'd be at 29.4 volts. 13 cells would give you 54.6 volts. 14 cells would give 58.8 volts, and so on. So in order to determine the voltage for your battery, you just multiply 4.2 by the number of cells. The next aspect to look at is the charge current where the charge current is usually limited by your BMS. Um, if your BMS is limited to 5 amps, for example, you wouldn't want to use a charger that's rated higher than 5 amps. I generally like to make sure that I'm using a charger that's well under the limit of my BMS. The battery we built in this five-part How to Build a Battery series used a 5 amp BMS. That means that it has a maximum charge rating of 5 amps. So we don't want to use a charger that's going to go higher than that 5 amps. In fact, I'm going to use a 2 amp charger because I like to have a good safety factor. Um, if you use cells though that have lower charging rates, where you don't have very many cells in parallel, it could be that the weakest link in your system is actually the cells. So for example, if your cells can only be charged as, let's say, uh, 1.5 amps each, and you only have 2 cells in parallel, then you can only charge at 3 amps, even if your BMS was rated for 5 amps. Next you need to look at the quality of a charger you want to use. And there's basically four classes here. I'm going to show you some examples. First is the cheapest version, and this is your basic plastic charger. Uh, there's no cooling fan, it's sealed. Um, this is about as cheap as it gets. These usually cost anywhere from $20 to $40, depending where you get them. And um, there's not much more to say about these. You know, they work, they charge your battery, but they're more prone to breaking um, sometimes they burn themselves out. They're, they're pretty cheap. Um, you get what you pay for. I generally keep one or two of these around just as a spare charger, but I like to use something a little bit better. Um, that being said, they, they will work. You can totally use these chargers. Um, there have been some cases of these things sort of burning themselves out and catching on fire, so I wouldn't leave it you know, under your bed charging all night, but um, just consider that. Next we have the sort of the next step up, and that is the aluminum case charger with a cooling fan. There's a few different versions of these. Um, I think this is the king pan version. Um, actually this, this might not be, but they're all basically similar, and this is essentially a step up in quality from those plastic chargers. These generally run you anywhere from 40 to, I don't know, 70 dollars, depending where you buy it. So one really rips you off, you might pay up to 100 for one of these. Uh, the advantage is that you generally have um, some type of indicators, a changeable fuse, and a cooling fan. And that's going to make these chargers more reliable. These still aren't the best chargers out there, but uh, they're, better, they're better than those plastic chargers. These are the ones that I generally use uh, if I'm building a battery for a client, because it's a good middle grade uh, charger. The next step up, and I don't have an example of this, but I'll show you a picture here, are the adjustable voltage chargers. Um, an example of this is the Luna charger, or the charger that EM3 EV supplies. Um, and these are really good chargers because they're built on a really good quality um, aluminum case uh, cooling fan charger, but they also have adjustable features. So you can change the voltage to not charge your battery up all the way. And that's just going to increase the life of your battery if you charge it to say 90 or 95 percent instead of 100 percent. Uh, the other thing is they often have adjustable currents. So you can choose whether you want a faster charge or a slower charge. It's generally better to charge slower with a lower current, but sometimes you want to be able to charge quick to get back on the road. Uh, the last option, and this is my favorite, is the cycle sati uh, satiator. The cycle satiator. It's a tough one to say. 
Uh, and this is made by uh, Grin Technologies in Vancouver, Canada. And it's just a bulletproof charger. It's a little bit big, but this is a 360 watt, um, waterproof, totally sealed, um, multiple voltage, multiple current charger. You can bring this thing up to 8 amps and it'll go up to 60 volts, which means you can charge up to a 14S battery. Um, and it's just, it's bulletproof. I really like this. I love the fact that it's waterproof, so I don't have to worry about it getting wet if I want to mount it on a bike. It's got mounting holes here. It's got great connectors. It comes with this Nutrik connector. Uh, I decided not to cut this off because it comes with a great quality connector. So I actually made some, um, some adapters here that I can just plug in. You know, this one's an RCA here. Got, uh, I forget what this is called. It kind of goes to a computer power supply. I don't know. If anyone knows what this is called, let me know. Um, and then you can program your own charge profiles. So here I've got my 36 volt profile, 48, um, a 24 volt for my wife's bike, uh, my 58.8 volt, that's for the 14S battery that I use on my normal bike. And so you can just program all sorts of uh, charge profiles with different voltages, different currents, um, anything you'd like. There's also uh, the ability to add a temperature sensor so that you can see how hot your battery is getting when you charge it. You can have a cutoff if it's getting too hot. Um, this thing, you can update the firmware, they occasionally release uh, updates. It's just an amazing charger. It's expensive, it's something like $300 I think, but um, it's just an amazing charger. If you only have one battery, it's probably not worth it, unless you just really want the features. But for someone like me, that I've got a bunch of e-bikes with different batteries, and building batteries, and fixing batteries, it's amazing. I can do everything with just one charger. So these are the, the different types of chargers. Uh, it's really up to you to decide what level of quality you want to go for, but the biggest thing is just to make sure that you're matching the current and the voltage correctly for your battery. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this five-part series. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I try to answer the questions. And um, thanks for watching.